We spend all of our time saying, oh, break this one up and, and get all the dead stuff off that one. That's just a dried up tree. But you know what? We need to say, God, I want to produce more. I'm not satisfied with what I'm producing. I said, I'm not satisfied with what I'm producing because I know that if I'll allow God to touch me, there's a greater harvest to come off of me. There's a greater harvest of you. I can just see it. This needs to go snap. This needs to be pruned. What in your life needs to be cut back this morning? You see, some of this, these arrogant Christians want to hold their head up and back and say, Oh, they, nothing needs to be cut off of me. But I sure can't think of a lot that needs to be cut off of Randy. They don't nothing need to be cut off me. But I tell you what, that sorry rascal over there needs a whole... I always got to prune their tree. I hope God wears you out this morning. I hope I hear His hands snapping and breaking and crackling and popping. I hope it sounds like Rice Krispies in this house this morning. Snap, crackle, pop, baby. That's what I want to hear in God's house this morning. Because you know what? God is sick and tired of people halfway producing. And He's looking for a true church that says they're going to bring forth a good crop. They're going to bring a crop that's going to change lives. Because I'm just going to tell you something. You are not producing fruit for yourself. The vine don't produce fruit to eat the fruit. The vine does not grow fruit to eat the fruit itself. The vine grows fruit so somebody else will enjoy the blessing of the vine. And you know what? Somebody needs to enjoy the blessing of your fruit. And if you're not producing, you are robbing somebody of a blessing and somebody of a greater and closer walk with God. And you are producing fruit to bring honor and glory to Jesus, not for man. And a lot of us, our problem is, is we want to have a good harvest so we can say, look at us and look at me. Don't I produce a good crop? And you know what? I want to tell you this morning, get off of your little high horse because your fruit is not for your enjoyment. Your fruit is for somebody else to eat off of. Can somebody eat off your fruit? It got real quiet, brother. But you know why it got quiet? Because not many fruit trees are in this house. That's exactly why it got quiet. And you know what? There's a lot of you know you ain't producing. But the problem is you ain't willing to be touched by God to produce. And that's why the atmosphere just changed. And that's why a lot of hearing aids just got turned off. Because they don't want to hear the snap, crackle, pop. Because they still got this arrogant Christian religious attitude. It ain't me that needs breaking. Well, I can't think of one thing. I can think of a whole lot. And I can think of a whole lot for me, and I can think of a whole lot for you. And if you can't think of it, come see me, and I can probably help you think of something. And I bet it wouldn't take me long. Straight forward, brother. That's all I... All I Every branch that bears fruit, he purges. And in other words, he prunes it that it may bring forth more fruit. You see, every fruit on the vine, every fruit has a seed. A seed is not a seed for no reason. It's to bring forth more fruit. You see, what... Amen. Every one of us do. And we need to be producing more fruit. You see, you say, oh, but I love every, but love's not enough, church. Where's the gentleness? Where's the kindness? Where's the forgiveness? Where's the encouragement? We should be adding to our fruit daily. As God cuts away, there ought to be another piece of fruit pop up in our life.
But you see something else we have to be very careful about. Fruit takes work. To produce fruit, it takes work. And a lot of times we want to get impatient with people that ain't bearing what we're bearing. And we want to say, well, they're not the Christian I am. Thank God in some cases. I'm glad you realized it. <laughs> and we want to look across the aisle and we want to look at somebody. We want to look up at the choir and say, you know, they ain't near. I don't know what their problem is. It's not for you to worry about what their problem is. It's your, it's your position to pray for them and love them and to build them up and to encourage them and to grow them up to where they will become. And, and it's your place to start putting your hands on them in love of Christ and start growing them and getting them to the place where they can produce more fruit. The reason a lot of people can't produce fruit is because, you know what, you're stomping on the vine. You're stepping on the vine. And you're breaking off branches before they have a chance to produce. It takes work, and we have to allow God to work in the vine and on the, on the, on the garden. You see, there's, there's things in, your, in people's lives, but if we won't be so quick to judge, and we'll just let God handle it, that if we'll just let Him get in there and do His work as a gardener, little by little, He'll take the things away, and He'll cut the things away, and He'll move the things in your life that need to go little by little until you are something that He's proud of. But see, after somebody gets saved in two weeks, if they hadn't done laid down everything that they've been battling, oh, well, they didn't get it. They didn't get it. Uh, I've heard, I've seen people get saved and people say, well, I wonder how long that'll last. Well, with people like you, it won't last, but with God, it's possible. Just heartbreaking when you hear people say, well, I wonder how long that'll last because you know he was a drug addict, you know she was an alcoholic, you know she was a prostitute, I wonder how long this is going to last. It'll last as long as God wants it to last. It'll last for eternity when they truly give it to Jesus. People can't produce because they won't allow God to work in their lives. And we speak a, a word of discouragement as quick as they give their life to Jesus. And we want to see a harvest right then. Sometimes a harvest takes years. Sometimes a harvest takes years. To be honest with you, my harvest is way off. My, my production's way off. So what are you going to do about your preacher? Just say, God, prune him. God, cut him where he needs to be cut. God, you see his ends. My ends, they might be some dry ends, but I know where I'm connected. To the vine, baby. I know that my sap comes from Jesus. My anointing comes from wheat way down in the root called Jesus Christ, and it rises up. <laughs> Good gracious, into the vine and it runs out to the branches. And I'm holding on to that promise because I know that as he prunes and he cuts, there's a harvest coming. And I want every one of you in this house to be able to eat off the fruit that God produces from this vessel. I want every one of you to be able to go out on Sunday morning and say, My goodness, I got full off of the fruit off of that vine. And I don't want you to be able to go out and say it was Sam Henderson. I want you to say it was because God, the gardener, has touched that lie. And He's changed that lie. And He's purged that lie. And He's cut away on that lie. And because God worked in that garden, I ate off of the fruit of that garden this morning. And I walk out of here full in the Spirit because there was a harvest come off of Him. Because He allowed the anointing of the Holy Ghost to change His life. And that's what we ought to be able to say about everybody that we're sitting around. If people will just get real and say, God, prune on me so that somebody can eat off of me... And get filled up in you this morning. And that you will be exalted and glorified. And, and all the glory should go to God in the garden.